Good afternoon. <laughs> I'm Nick Casey. I'm the governor's chief of staff, and I was here on behalf of the governor and uh, the Department of Revenue to uh, give give the information that we've given out, I think, annual or monthly on a normal basis regarding the uh, activities of the state for the last month. And since we've just now cleared the end of the fiscal year, I can give you what some numbers are for the entirety of the fiscal year. The, uh, the bad news is for the fiscal year purposes, we actually into the fiscal year, um, if you count revenues, actually what I call collected revenues that we caught from third party sources such as taxation or fees, we into the year about $100 million in the hole. Fortunately, we were able to make up that $100 million hole because prior to the end of the year, the legislature approved a, a, a raid or a take on the rainy day fund of $40 million. And then on top of that, the various departments, including the executive branch and the state government, were able to sweep or garner from accounts $60 million worth of money that was either available or which we had, had collected because of prior, prior uh, percentage cuts in, uh, in the budget going back through the 12 months prior to July 1st of 2017. So although we had a $100 million, if you would, hole, we were able to fill that with rainy day fund and some people call them sweeps to get there. Why did we have a $100 million hole last year that we had to backfill with the rainy day fund and with the sweeps? It's primarily because we had, we had various uh, actual collections below estimates. As an example, the, the consumer sales tax for the 12 months was $62 million below what our estimate was. The personal income tax for last year was $100 million below what our estimate was. Uh, also, this information will be contained in the spreadsheets we normally post. It'll be on the tax commissioner spreadsheet. So if you all take a look at those online. There are probably going to be available, if not immediately after this, they may already be up there. So first, $62 million in personal income tax, we were short. About $100 million, $100,359,000 million, we were short on personal income tax. We were short on corporate net income tax of $21,094,000. And the only real bright spot last year when you look at it is really the prediction that the governor gave us when he did his state of the state that for the last four months of the fiscal year, basically March, April, and May, well, yeah, March, April, May, and June, severance taxes were actually $58 million above the estimate. So we're pleased the governor was able to predict that one. So as we finish this year, we don't look too good, but we did actually create a surplus. When I say create a surplus, we created that surplus because we took rainy day funds and we took these sweeps, but we did, it appears we're going to end the year with a surplus of revenues based upon those sweeps and the rainy day raid of about $63 million. Now, just informationally, what happens to the $63 million? Statutorily, half of that goes back to the rainy day fund. The other half of it rolls over and can be used for appropriations in the upcoming budget year that started July 1st going forward. So the good news is that part of that created surplus due to the rate on the rainy day fund is going to flow over into 2018's budget. Kind of the bad news on that is that, that about, when you do the mathematics, the legislature predicted in their budget there would be $82 million flowing in surplus. You cut that in half because half that would go to the rainy day fund. So they rolled into next year's budget about $40 million, $41 million of expected surplus from this year that they can spend next year. The negative is that that number is only going to be about $30 million. So there's an $11 million gap. So just to give you perspective, as we started July 1, the prediction of the legislature that we would in fact have a surplus that we could spend was overstated by $11 million. So we started the year $11 million in a hole. And that's of concern to us because when you start the year $11 million in a hole, that means that we're going to have to look at some issues. Some of that surplus that was expected and is not there was intended to go to DHHR. So DHHR will have some shortfall. Some of that money was expected possibly to go to volunteer fire departments. They will possibly have a shortfall in that regard. At least they appear right now to have that shortfall because of $11 million. And we'll have to look at other things that uh, can be controlled by the executive branch, uh, whether it be pick something. You know, when you don't have $11 million, you have to find somewhere to get it. So 
we'll have to look at things, whether it be uh, fall st uh, stock, uh, stockings of the creeks and, and rivers in the fall, or whether it be some other additional changes to fairs and festivals. We'll just have to work through that. But we do know that DHHR and volunteer firefighters are initially uh, affected on that. So as we go forward, uh, the information is pretty much detailed on the schedule that is there. But we, uh, we face the year now, next year, basically predicting what was a balanced budget to already be $11 million behind. Uh, some positives, we think in July, the governor appears to be correct, thankfully, that severance taxes continue to be a bright spot. So we think the severance taxes hopefully will be there. Uh, if the severance taxes do as the governor has predicted they will, we're going to find ourselves in a strange situation as we go later in the year. Because we can only spend what the legislature has appropriated, if the governor is right on the severance taxes, and secondarily, once the roads kick in as an engine to drive more efforts, we may find as we get later in the year, we hope, that we have more revenue than was budgeted. The only trouble is you have more revenue than is budgeted, you can't spend it. So you need the legislator to come, legislator to come back to us, for example, in, in the session in 2018 and tell us where any additional revenue via the roads, energy, or the, the severance tax benefits, when those start showing up, we're not going to be able to spend those. So we hate that we are working with a budget that constrains us to stay within those budgeted line items that we can't use this hope for additional severance taxes and hope for additional efforts from the road funds, all of which I'd tell you were the governor's leadership. We're hoping that those come in great, and then we'll just have to deal with how we can get some kind of ability to spend those funds later on. 